but we are starting with the new walkouts happening right now in the UAW strike. Here is a look at the two assembly plants where 7,000 workers walked off the job as of noon today. It's GM's Lansing Delta Township Assembly. They make the Buick Enclave and the Chevy Traverse. And Ford's Chicago Assembly. They make the Explorer and the Lincoln Aviator. Now, Sean Fain made the announcement after 10 o'clock this morning saying that there has been no meaningful movement for GM and Ford this week, but that there has been with Stellantis, which is why they are not targeted. Sadly, Despite our willingness to bargain, Ford and GM have refused to make meaningful progress at the table. That's why at noon Eastern time today, we will expand our strike to these two companies. To be clear, negotiations haven't broke down. We're still talking with all three companies. And I'm still very hopeful that we can reach a deal that reflects the incredible sacrifices and contributions our members have made over the last decade. But I also know that what we win at the bargaining table depends on the power we build on the job. It's time to use that power. And this is much like it was last Friday morning when Sean Fain took to Facebook Live. He actually started his broadcast a little bit later, probably around 1025, because he said that there was a last minute flurry of activities with some negotiations with the automakers. Well, those automakers, they are responding this morning after this announcement and the latest walkout. GM says they have, quote, still not received a comprehensive counter offer from UAW leadership to our latest proposal made back on September 21st and that calling for more strikes is just for headlines and not for progress. We are here to reach an agreement so we can all get back to work. As for Ford, they are having a press conference in the next half an hour. We're going to bring you the latest on that. But Stellantis did put out a statement this morning as well, saying that they have been intensely working with the UAW to find solutions to the issues that are most concerned to our employees while ensuring that the company can remain competitive given the market's fierce competitions. We have made progress in our discussion, but gaps remain. All right, well, let's take you out uh, live to Lansing, and that's where Megan Woods is. She just got to the GM Lansing and Delta Township Assembly. I know you just got there, Megan, and I think as I saw, just at the end of noon, there was a lot of cars that were coming out of the assembly plant. That's right, Christy. And you mentioned it started at noon and in just those 30 minutes, we've seen the lot clear out. There was a long line of vehicles coming through here and they've all left. About 2,500 people are employed here. This plant builds the Buick Enclave and Chevy Traverse. We'll be out here all day as people start joining that picket line um, and talking to people about why this is so important to them to join uh, their fellow UAW members. The Lansing uh, Regional Stamping Plant is still going to be up and running uh, as of right now. But again, um, people, the strike has expanded and now it is to 25,000 people who are striking against the big three right now. And uh, depending on what happens today and throughout next week, we could see that expand again. So we're taking a close watch or uh, keeping a close watch on what's happening here today. We'll be out here all day again talking to those picketers. Back to you. All right. Sounds good. Megan Woods going to be live today at uh, the GM Lansing Delta Township Assembly. Appreciate it. We'll get back to you later on today, Megan. All right, and as she's talking about that expanding to 25,000 workers now um, who are all on strike as we are entering day 15 of the UAW strike. Joining me now to get just a little bit of perspective on, on what we're looking at and the negotiation is Art Wheaton. He's the director of labor studies at Cornell University, and he has expertise in collective bargaining and negotiations. Art, thanks so much for joining me. It's good to see you. My pleasure. Happy to be here. Why don't you go ahead and give me a sense of what you thought from Sean Fain's announcement this morning and the tactics he's taking just targeting two assembly plants, but with very popular vehicles. I think the biggest word for me would be relief that they actually delayed the starting of the press conference for on Facebook Live by a half an hour or so and saying they made great progress at Stellantis, which to me is good news. They're the company I was most worried about following the pattern. I'm also pleased that it's only one additional assembly plant at um, both Ford and General Motors, and that lost production can be made up in a matter of weeks through overtime. So I'm, I'm relieved. 
I think it's still putting pressure on all three to make a deal, and I'm more optimistic all three will be able to get a deal. And that's what I think is really interesting at this point when we when we you know look going forward and what this strategy strategy has been here. We're also seeing this play out very much so in the media with GM coming out this morning and saying that um, more of these strikes is really just to get headlines. Stellantis putting out uh, a, a statement as well, and Ford is going to be holding a live media briefing within the next half hour. What do you make of the the public nature of how these negotiations have gone, Art? I think historically you've not heard as much of the negotiating in the press, but I think Sean Fain being a newly elected UAW president trying to change things is trying to be much more transparent with the membership. So I learned at the same minute that everybody else that's a UAW member learned about which which plants were gonna be added to the strike. And I think he's done a very good job of showing here's what the proposal is, here's what the counter proposals were. Um, but I'm, I'm encouraged. I'm happy that they're actually bargaining and at the table and making progress at all three at different levels, but they're making progress in their negotiations. Yeah, making progress in art. And I know that, you know, we, we, we don't know exactly what's going on at the bargaining table right now. But when we think about maybe inching closer to a deal with one over the others and maybe having some kind of template of what a new contract will look like, is it really possible to get very close with all of these three automakers to have the same kind of contract because of the, very, the various natures of how each of them is going about the EV transition and growing business moving forward? I think it's quite possible to get it. And I think the strategy of having the stand up strike is trying to pit one company against the other, much like the companies have used against the union for decades and trying to get all three to come up with their best offer. And by negotiating in the press, you get to hear what each of the companies is offering or at least a pretty good snapshot. So they're allowing the other companies to know what's on the table. So it's, it's, different to have it so much in the press, but it's also encouraging that they are making progress. And I would say almost double the offers of what they were prior to the strike. So prior to the expiration of the contract, they've gone from 9% to around 20%. And at least two of the three have offered to reinstate COLA, the cost of living adjustment. So there's been good progress. And I think there's similar proposals, which is good news that they could follow the pattern. Art, how would you describe uh, labor having a, move, uh, a moment here in the country where we're concentrating more than ever before on what the middle class means and, and what it means to have a fair wages and a good job? And we're looking at possibly a strike out in Vegas with the hospitality workers. You know, we know that UPS avoided a strike, but it seems like that labor is having a movement and it's more important than it ever has been before. Absolutely. And part of it has to do with the economic climate. You're seeing very high inflation over the last few years when their contracts were agreed to four years ago for many of them. The inflation wasn't an issue. It is now and they're trying to catch up. And there's also huge public approval of unions. According to Gallup, polls were near record highs since the 1960s. And with very low unemployment, it's less risky to go out on strike now because you can get a similar job or a similar paying job relatively uh, easier than you could previously. So that's the economic environment, the public sentiment and the big profits that many of these companies are making allows the unions to try to get a bigger piece of that profit pie. Last question for you, Art. What should we be listening for in the next couple of days in terms of just different words when you hear the companies coming out and, and saying certain things? I mean, you're an expert in negotiations. Is there something that we should be specifically listening for? What happens in bargaining is you have deadline behavior. So I wasn't really shocked that the con press conference got delayed because of progress at the table. As you get closer to the next deadline, which would likely be Friday, we should be listening to Friday morning to see what's happening. And if you start to hear more news in the in the press, that means things aren't going as well at the table. So if you hear great things, then that means things are going well. So I think we'll know a lot more by next week, Friday, as all three try to get a deal to avoid any future losses. All right, sounds good. Art Wheaton, Director of Labor Studies at Cornell University, thanks so much for joining us today.
Thank you.